Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. This is a second part of a two-part series. Uh, again, this was uh, one of my trips that I actually took to uh, South America. The second leg of the trip is to um, an area in Chile, southern Chile. Uh, the city of, uh, that it was in is actually called Los Angeles, so very unique. The city that we were looking in or working in was called the city of Renaico. Uh, southern Chile, um, right before this, I spent three days in Ecuador where the temperature was 84, 85 degrees. Landed in um, Renaico in Los Angeles area where it was 23 degrees. And so I had to quickly change my clothes around and make sure that I had everything I needed uh, for this colder, much colder weather. The projects that I took a look at were both done in conjunction with the Rotary Foundation. And my job in both of these was to serve as a Rotary Foundation cadre or a technical advisor or expert in the field of two different things. The original one, the one that I did in Ecuador, was for water and sanitation. This one here is a community and economic development project. And so it was a little bit different, but again, it was done in 2014-2015, uh, implemented and completed. And my reason for being there was to evaluate the sustainability of this project and to make sure that it, in fact, was able to, uh, to continue being sustainable in, in the future, the distant future. The project was an ambulance project, and I had questions about the sustainability of the project, only because, generally speaking, ambulance projects are not allowed or accepted uh, through the Rotary Foundation because of the fact that these vehicles have a finite life. In other words, five, seven, maybe 10 years, and the vehicle itself is worn out to where uh, it would no longer function. And so I questioned the sustainability component of actually the purchase of a vehicle. Well, um, again, part of the scrutiny I had to take a look at with this project was to see, in fact, and think outside of the box, what was sustainable about the project and how was it being measured? So um, with that, uh, one of the benefits that I have is to travel around the world and see firsthand all of these rotary projects. And because I get to see it, I want to bring you along with this also. And so I took my camera and was able to capture a lot of the images from this area that I want to share with you. So the first uh, picture that I have here is when I entered into the city of Renaico. And if you take a look at the picture itself, you'll notice that um, it was fairly dark. I went from the middle of summertime to the middle of wintertime when I landed in Renaico. And uh, as you can see also, the, it's a very old city, an old town. And our project was actually developed. The ambulance project was done in conjunction with the city and community of Renaico. The um, group that met us there were uh, a group of Rotarians. I had two Rotarians with me that were my guides, aides, uh, assistants, and also a group that came in from the Renaico area. In other words, there were city officials, uh, government officials, and also um, people that were working in the clinic itself. And so the picture that you see here or the picture of the group that we met with when we visited the city of Renaico. And they took us first into their clinic. We sat down uh, with this group and talked about how the project was working out, what it entailed, and some history and background of the community itself. The number of people, the number of people being served, any uh, type of issues that they had, both health-wise uh, and economic-wise, and what the, what the feel is of, of that community. And so that was the important part of the, the meeting, the initial meeting. The um, gentleman that I spent most of my time talking to was the mayor of the city. His name is Dr. Juan Carlos Renau. And Juan Carlos, believe it or not, is not only the mayor, but he is also the director of the, uh, the clinics, the health clinics, in all of the uh, region of Renaico. And so it was interesting about him having both areas. In other words, being not only the mayor, where he understood governance, the, the governance of the specific municipality, federal, state, and, and, and local, but he was also the chief doctor of, of all of the clinics, of all of the area also. So he was very well um, connected to everything that we had to take a look at. Uh, invaluable resource. And by the way, it was because of this gentleman here that you see standing next to me that the project was, in fact, so successful. Uh, I was surprised and astounded at how they were able to leverage in all of those items to make this thing successful um, as, a, as a project itself. The next picture, uh, he took us into his, his clinic, and we, we took a look at some of the interesting data, the facts, the points, 
things like that, where we were um, able to listen to different presenters from different areas of each of the clinics talk about how the benefits of this ambulance was working out. The emergency response times, the transportation times of uh, patients that were bedridden, that couldn't get out any other way, the poor people, the, the people that could not afford to leave the house, travel, or catch a ride by taxi or whatever, that, that were house, house ridden because of the fact of either health and or finances. And so um, this part of the um, tour was quite fascinating. And as you can see, he actually tag teamed his complete staff um, by, with people from different areas and different regions, different uh, geographical regions, but also different departments within that clinic. Uh, so it was very fascinating. And um, again, each and every one of the people on his staff were very, very informed on the situation and what was going on. This is a picture of the ambulance. Uh, the very first picture that I got to see here, this ambulance, it's a Hyundai vehicle um, from a third world uh, development uh, model, uh, which is different from here in the United States. They don't do these because of the uh, construction, the uh, safety issues of that one, but these things are purchased for about two thirds of the price of anything we could even touch here in the United States. This ambulance was a special built ambulance, specifically as an ambulance by the Hyundai plant. And uh, it was actually a very well-designed and functioning vehicle itself. You'll see the uh, placards on it from ambulance to the um, city placards, also the rotary in insignia. So um, rotary was the major part of this thing. This project was funded by rotary clubs in, um, let's see, they were from Argentina. So um, Argentina clubs were the ones that were financing it. The host group was the Rotary Club of Los Angeles. A uh, picture of the front uh, of the vehicle, as you notice, it's a three-quarter size uh, ambulance. I was surprised that uh, they didn't have anything larger. By the way, if you notice the picture uh, or the vehicle to the right of your screen, you notice it also looks like an ambulance. Believe it or not, that is an ambulance. That was donated by the government, uh, the state government in that area. And the reason why I pointed this out is because even though they had two ambulances, the primary use ambulance was the Hyundai that Rotary purchased. And I asked them, why would that be? The fact was is that the other ambulance, the larger one uh, to the right there, was actually an ambulance that was purchased, used, and was non-functioning. They couldn't keep it running. It was costing them way too much in time, money, and effort, and they couldn't get the parts to keep that thing operational. And so I thought that was kind of fascinating too. When we look at sustainability components of anything, including mechanical components, we have to look, take a look at what is available in each of these countries. And in fact, the developing countries, uh, you will find that it's important to make sure that you have distribution sites throughout the region. Otherwise, you won't have that sustainability. The next picture is, uh, again, another picture of the ambulance that we have. And this ambulance, um, again, was uh, the pride and joy of the city of Renaico. And I go, wow, you guys are really taking good care of this vehicle. And they said it had to. They had to because this ambulance actually changed the lives of many of the people in this community. There were about 12,000 people uh, that live in the community of Renaico uh, in, in outlying areas. Part of it is city, part of it is uh, rural areas. The gentleman that is um, standing in the middle there is uh, Francisco Socius, who is a, a Rotarian from the Rotary Club of Los Angeles. Very, very well connected with Rotary International. Uh, I knew this gentleman even before I went down there. He's a past district governor, works throughout cent uh, southern uh, South America, and also writes the Rotarian magazine for the uh, continent of South, South America. So uh, a well-connected person. He was the one that was probably the principal involved with doing the, uh, the design, the development of this project and grant, and it showed. Um, very well written, very well thought out project overall. The next picture we'll take a look at is actually the inside of what this ambulance took, is like. And uh, the purchase price of the ambulance also included all of the components that you see inside. So this came as a fully furnished ambulance uh, from the factory itself. The doctor added a few more things because he realized that it was going to service 
not only younger people, emergency uh, patients, but also those people that were uh, invalid and not able to leave their houses. So it has a number of I other items included in it. And if you look at it from the inside, from this picture, it looks a lot bigger on the inside than it did from the outside. Um, and again, they did an excellent job of keeping it clean, keeping it maintained. The picture you see there is a picture of an ambulance that was purchased in 2014. Again, uh, the picture that we have shows the pride that that community has in this ambulance. It has literally changed a lot of lives. You will see the picture of all of the people that we had, uh, we ran around with. The one picture you don't see is, uh, again, by the way, uh, I had the camera in my hand, but uh, we had a, a paparazzi person. This, this lady girl ran around, took pictures of us everywhere. She must have taken a million pictures of us running around from site to site, but this is the team that it took. The, to making sure that this was all taken care of and done correctly. Um, the gentleman that you see in this picture is actually the driver of that vehicle. He is in charge of the vehicle, keeping it clean, maintaining it, making sure that if there's another driver, that driver is certified and able to run and operate the vehicle effectively. This actually is the responsibility of that one driver. So he takes care of everything from the maintenance, to the equipment inside, to the cleaning of that one, to the daily documents of where this vehicle goes. They literally have an hour-to-hour -hour chart showing each and every run, who was picked up, how far they went, what the use was, how they were able to use the ambulance, and the turnaround time for the next route out. So um, again, uh, state-of-the-art, they did an outstanding job of monitoring, tracking everything. If I were to bring back all the records for this that I do usually for most of the grants that I evaluate, it would have been a book of about three inches. So uh, fortunately, we, we are in the, uh, uh, the new age, and so I was able to put this all in a flash drive. Again, rotary uh, signified here. And one thing I thought was kind of unique, uh, as the mayor and the director of the health organization came out and took a look at the ambulance, he pointed to rotary. And as he pointed to this one, I want to share this story with you. He looked at it and he goes, I can't believe how much Rotary does. He goes, here you are coming in from California to take a look and evaluate the project that we did here in South Chile. Rotary must be amazing. What else did they do? And so we were able to talk about it. And believe it or not, he was so taken back by what Rotary had done, not only for his community, but for the outlying areas and what we talked about internationally that he is considering actually starting a Rotary Club in the city of Vernaico. So the people from, uh, Rotarians from Los Angeles, which is about 40 minutes away, wouldn't have to come in there. They could probably handle both of them themselves and have joint projects done with the two clubs. And I thought that was outstanding. Here's a gentleman that has the foresight, not only to see that Rotary is doing a lot of things, but also the foresight to improve in his community. This gentleman here, very young, he is probably in his early 40s. Um, was very instrumental in changing a lot of things that happened in the city of Renaico. One of the disadvantages or poor things that set him back was the fact that they had a fire, an electrical fire, and he lost City Hall, but he was in the process of building that back up, bigger and better than it was before, and because he's young, technology was state-of-the-art and is going to remain that way for quite a while. Some of the numbers that we take a look at, uh, this was presented to us in a PowerPoint, shows the response time of the vehicle. And as you can see, um, again, it's in Spanish, but you can see it's 40 minutes to one to two hours. The number of times that this ambulance could do a cycle and the number of, or the number of minutes that was reduced literally to about one quarter of the time of response for these, the patients, the people and the clients that were having to be served by this ambulance. And so this states a big point, a main point, and one of the reasons why we are looking at sustainability is for these numbers. The second one actually has to do with looking at some of the other numbers in the clinic itself. How many patients were actually served by this? Um, how many are, are uh, able to work it out? We uh, are looking at a picture now of actually the number of patients that were served in 2014 before that ambulance, 1,830 was the number in 2014. And to 2017, when this um, ambulance was fully functional, to 17,212. I mean, it is amazing on what the changes were. And when I talk about sustainability, this was the one point that I thought stood out the most. Because we know the ambulance isn't going to last more than 15 or 20 years. 
But the fact of the matter is, is that the people of this community, through this service now, will realize that without an ambulance, if they had to go back, it just wouldn't work out. They would have to move forward. And so that ambulance now becomes an integral part of that community. That ambulance becomes basically a lifesaver. And by not having it, even if they had to finance it by some other means, so be it. But they will, I guarantee you, always have an ambulance and project available for that. Picture here is one of the outlying clinics that we uh, visited. Uh, as you can see, we have quite a few people. Believe it or not, this was a secondary clinic. This small clinic here, the uh, doctor asked all of his people to come out and take, uh, take the picture because he was so proud of uh, the ambulance he had. By the way, there were a few, <laughs> a few that did stay inside to take care of the patients. But overall, um, they're very proud of what they're doing. Uh, and again, it was because of the mayor and the director that there's such a good communication and connection between the community and, and the people of that, uh, of that community, including the uh, city hall. The gentleman in the front uh, seated, seated was my driver. Uh, his name was Fernando, and he was, he was great. Uh, Fernando Perez was a driver, took care of me for most of that time there, and we had, we had a great time together. He told me a lot about the community, the areas, and what Rotary does, because one of the things Rotary is unique throughout the world. Each club has a little bit of different things that they do. They all have their own personality. The next picture is a picture that we took um, in one of the areas. I wanted to share with you some of the pictures of the region itself. And as you can see, it's a very forested area. Uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of Washington, uh, Canada, even a little bit of uh, Alaska as far as the, the way it looked, the vegetation, and the way people lived. And, and again, a very cold area. Uh, this was one of the restaurants we stopped at, and again, we we're talking about food. Uh, never short on food when we're doing rotary projects. Picture here is uh, one of the outlying areas. This picture here shows one of the schools that we visited, and in the school, it also had a small clinic to it. And this small clinic included um, the use of the ambulance because this was probably about an hour and a half outside of the city of Renaico, and it was, again, one of the areas that was being serviced by this ambulance. If there's any emergencies or any patient that needed to seek uh, more urgent care, the ambulance was sent out to this area, this region. Picture here shows one of the schools, and one of the benefits that's a secondary benefit from this ambulance was the fact that now that these areas are being serviced by the ambulance itself, and they're able to transport people specifically for, um, for use of community development, that they were able to bring in and re-implement the school. The school now serviced, and you can see, there's only between three and five students that go to the school, but it actually has an easier time getting supplies, sources, and resources now from the government because the ambulance also serves as a transport for um, supplies that the school is actually needing. Picture here shows uh, City Hall. I, I took a picture, this is a crop picture of City Hall, with all the people, this is the end of our tour as we know it. Uh, the staff was very cordial, very helpful. Uh, the people that you see there on staff actually were staff mostly from the city hall. And I, again, I cropped the picture because there's no roof on this building. It was burned out during that fire that they had only about a year ago, uh, less than a year ago. I think they said about nine months before that, prior to that. The fire, by the way, was an electrical fire that occurred up in the attic space. And so uh, again, wood, good construction. This area being similar geographically to um, Oregon, Washington, uh, there's a lot of wood, pine, pine forest, so that's kind of how they built and constructed a lot of these areas. But the uh, people, um, outstanding. The project itself, outstanding. I uh, could not believe the support that was given to the Rotarians and the Rotarians that gave their support to this different, um, this different project and community. One of the, uh, I would say, unique things that happened, again, I mean, it's three days in, in Ecuador, came down, spent three days in southern Chile, um, was some of the similarities. Not because Ecuador was hot and not because uh, Concepcion or Los Angeles was really cold, but the naming of the different communities. As you can see, uh, one of the pictures I took was a picture here showing uh, Los Angeles. By the way, that was the name of the club, the Rotary Club of Los Angeles. Now, Route 5, I-5, uh, was another coincidence. 
Rotary Club of Los Angeles is also known as, uh, of California. The Rotary Club of Los Angeles, California is known as LA5. <laughs> this one here was one of the first, if not, I believe, the very first Rotary Club in South America, uh, over 90 years old, and so I thought that was unique. I came across these signs as we traveled around. There was a sign, and I missed the picture. It showed an arrow going to Los Angeles, has another sign pointing the opposite direction, going to San Jose, and another sign showing a short distance straight ahead to Santa Barbara. <laughs> Again, here I am in the middle of Chile with uh, seeing the names of uh, geographically areas that were very related to the California where, I, where we're at right now. The region itself, again, was done mostly, uh, most of the industry has to do with wood. And I took a picture from my hotel room because I wanted to show you this. The picture, as you see, has a haze to it. And this haze, believe it or not, is all smoke, is wood fire smoke, because there's so much wood, timber, uh, twigs, kindling, things like that, that in order for the people to live more cost effectively, they actually have pot belly stoves and heaters. So they have internal heaters in each of the houses that take wood fires. And so this is a haze that's developed over time. Um, they say it's really bad in the wintertime because the, sun, the air doesn't move around a lot. Uh, this was taken probably at about 4.30 in the afternoon um, when I was down there. But um, as the summertime and spring comes, the wind blows everything out of there. Uh, but I did want to show you this picture because it's one of the challenges that we face too is having these wood fires, we also taking a look at potentially in the future having to deal with a, a lot of respiratory issues. Um, surprising there wasn't more that happened there at that place uh, when I was there. I had one day where I was uh, taken on a tour to uh, an area where they had a, an actually a volcano. It's a dormant volcano. Uh, this area was called uh, a, a, a tuna, I believe is what it was, and that's the name of the, uh, the um, volcano. And as you can see in the picture, the picture itself is uh, very similar in looks to like uh, Canada or, or uh, Alaska. And this is how far down south I was. It's the other extreme end of their continent. And pretty fascinating. Uh, I did get to go there and take a look at it. This road, by the way, if you continue on that road, will take you over a pass into Argentina. So uh, that was uh, one of the day trips that I had. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Francisco, actually took me on this trip. Beautiful area. We went up into the forested areas. I wanted to share pictures with you of this area. I mean, this was taken right at the pass. Uh, again, beautiful area. It goes up into the Andes. This mountain pass, again, reaches, I believe it was 14,000 feet if we continued on that road. It was closed. You couldn't get through because they were dead of winter. Next picture I show shows the, uh, the actual snowfall. Uh, we actually were kind of turned back and around because of the fact that there was snow coming down. A snowstorm hit us right as we were getting up near the uh, end of the road as far as we could go. So we turned around, but I did want to take a picture of this one. Now realizing that three days before this picture was taken, I was sitting in 85 degrees on a beach in, <laughs> in Ecuador. So uh, it took some culture shock. I'm kind of surprised I actually didn't get sick from this trip. This is uh, the last picture I have. This is a picture of the Rotary Club of Los Angeles in their clubhouse. And it's an older club. Um, again, the club is in its 90s. And I was asked by a couple people, I posted this picture up on Facebook, where are the women of this club? <laughs> well, it, it's a men-only club, unfortunately, but that's the way things are in some of the uh, more developing countries where they only allow men to continue on with, with Rotary. And uh, women, if they decide to join Rotary, will join in a women's club. Uh, the city of Los Angeles has one women's club, so I thought that was kind of unique, kind of interesting. I brought that up also because in the city of Los Angeles in Chile, there are actually three clubs. One club is mixed. Um, however, the two women uh, are on leave of absence. This club here is gentlemen only, and there's a club also that is women only. And the past governor of that group, uh, the gentleman sitting to my left, to your right, um, Francisco Socias, is a past district governor. 
His wife is also a past district governor in the other club of Los Angeles, the Women's Club, and she happened to have been a classmate of mine. So I met her actually years ago in San Diego. We have yet to do a project together, but I'm sure that's going to happen soon. One of the um, advantages, again, that I have to tell you about is the fact that I get an opportunity to meet with a lot of different Rotary Clubs and a lot of different Rotary Groups, see the success of all of these projects, and create a network because this network is where we as Rotarians are able to help other people out throughout the world. We talked about sustainability of this project and sustainability of an ambulance, uh, again, very tricky to include because of the fact that it's a vehicle. It, it's not going to last forever. But because of the fact that Rotary is seeking sustainable projects, we want to take a look at not only including the vehicles, the Im implementation of these projects, but we want to have to take a look at or want to take a look at the actual impacts that these projects have on the people. And I think that is the number one sustainability component how the people of these communities are able to now be supported by a project done by Rotary and the need that has been addressed because this need will continue on throughout. One of the advantages that we have is that Rotary, um, Rotarians are given the opportunity also to work in service in these projects. And it's my opinion that as we do Rotary projects now and in the future, it's imperative that we have Rotarians involved with these projects. Why? Because they will be able to see firsthand how they have benefited through their efforts a changing world, a world that will benefit a lot of other people, and a world that will have a tighter-knit group. Everybody will be working together to help those people that are less fortunate. I think that is the number one component of sustainability, and one thing that Rotarians have to be able to address and include as they go forward with their projects. Knowing that, and seeing, in fact, that this was, by the way, I, I did have one more leg of this trip that I want to share with you next time, um, where I spent the next day in Chile also, next three days in Chile. Nine days total. I'm back. Happy to be back. I've got one more trip coming up. I'll be leaving for one trip uh, starting next week, so nice to be home for a few days. With that, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And take a look at all the different projects. Share what we are doing throughout Rotary with the programs that I'm doing here and enjoy the pictures that I've done and taken for you because this is what Rotary is all about. With that, thank you very much and we will see you next time.